So this exhibition is about the ways that journalism and the news can mislead or create a different sense of reality from actual reality. Uh, and in a lot of cases, that can depend on a wide range of things. So it can be accidental. It can be due to the fact that sometimes it takes, the news has to travel by way of rumor and going across oceans on uh, wooden ships and uh, the, the actual mechanics of printing a newspaper and uh, having people out on the streets crying out that they have a newspaper uh, and telling people that the news is available. Sometimes people are just out to mislead. And so this case is focusing on that. And I'm going to look at two items in this case that are uh, some of my favorites in the exhibition. The first is called The Moon Hoax by Richard Adams Locke. It's a book that was published in 1859, but it's relating the story of a much earlier hoax that was published in the Sun newspaper in New York uh, back in 1835. The hoax was essentially the Sun published a series of stories that were told about supposedly scientific discoveries on the moon that sort of escalated uh, day by day as the newspaper was released until eventually it was discussing that there were human-like beings who were flying around on the moon with uh, the wings of bats. So the original Batman in 1835. Eventually, people figured it out, but not before this had become an absolutely sensational story. Uh, it changed, in some ways, changed journalism. It changed the fate of the newspaper. It became the most popular newspaper in the country at that time. Eventually, when uh, Richard Adams Locke publishes this book about that experience, what he claims is that it was never actually an intention to, he never actually had the intention to mislead, that he was publishing something about, um, it was intended to be satire and essentially point out people's uh, misplaced willingness to believe something that conformed with religious belief, even if it was ridiculously sort of anti-scientific. Now, whether that's the case in reality or whether it was a hoax that became, um, became so popular that it was, uh, it was just too uh, effective uh, and too profitable to cancel, who knows? The second item I want to look at is one of my favorite pieces in the exhibition. Uh, this is an issue of Scientific American from 1895, and the story is titled A Mammoth Potato. Maggie Murphy Potato, weight 66 pounds, 10 ounces, and it's a story of a county fair, um, story of a man who grew a potato, which as you can see, it's huge. Spoiler, he didn't really grow a potato uh, the size of a person. Um, what he did is he had a photographer take a photo of a potato. They printed it out, essentially enlarged it, and then he held up a piece of plywood with that image of the potato on it. So what he's really doing is Photoshop before Photoshop. Uh, and again, this was originally published in a small newspaper. It found its way into Scientific American and caused kind of a stir. Uh, when they realized that they had been duped, Scientific American published a retraction, and they said the following. They said, the potato, quote, proves to be a gross fraud, being contrivance of the photographer who imposed upon us as well as others. An artist who lends himself to such methods of deception may be ranked as a thoroughbred knave to be shunned by everybody, end quote. Uh, so again, we have a hoax, we have misleading, but if we actually look back to the, to the root cause, so to speak, uh, what was actually going on was this was intended as a promotional stunt, basically, uh, and it just kind of got out of hand and it got national attention um, and ended up with Scientific American judging the perpetrator a thoroughbred knave. Really, it was just supposed to sell tickets.